Hi, I'm Debbie Nelson. I'm with Nixing Publishing here in the United States, and I serve as contrib contributing editor and project manager. I've been doing a series of videos with the editor in chief of the Nixing Journal, Adrian Nixon, and he's here with us from Yorkshire, England. Hi, Adrian. Hello, Debbie. Nice to see you again. Nice to see you too. So today we're going to be talking about graphene composites and what kind of graphene, how the graphene goes into them. I'm going to let Adrian take that one. Adrian, tell us about what is a graphene composite. Okay, let's break it down into two parts first of all. What is a composite material? And then we'll look at graphene composites. Okay. So um, the way to think about a composite material is that some materials um let, let, let's go back they, they actually go back a long way probably about four or five thousand years actually could be even further um mud bricks everybody's familiar with mud bricks that are used in uh, developing parts of the world so you get some mud from the river you then form it into a brick you let it dry in the sun and then you build a wall out of it the problem is when it rains um or the wind blows then the mud gets washed away and eventually the wall falls down now, some buildings uh, in, the, uh, in places like Africa, uh, Middle East, they've been standing for centuries, thousands of years, built with mud bricks. The trick is, the reason that makes them stronger is the ancients knew what they were doing and they made a composite material of mud and straw. And they mixed the two together and the straw locks the mud together and provides some extra strength that then holds the brick, the mud together so that when the wind and the rain, the heat expansion and contraction come, it takes some of the strain. And so a composite material has the benefits of both composites, or it could be several, there could be several ingredients, but in this case, there's two, two components, the mud and the straw, and they each enhance the other. So that's what a composite is. You with me so far? Very simple, yeah. It's like in cooking, when you want to make a meatloaf, you've got to add your, some type of crumbs in an egg. <laughs> ah, exactly, yes. Composite cooking. Yeah. I never thought about that. Yeah, very good point. So what, what's a graphene composite? Well, um, it's a polymer, plastics, uh, which have um, graphene put into them. And you remember we've talked about graphene powders, mm -hmm. and we've got graphene liquids here. And then when we mix them together, we can create something that's a bit stronger. So this thing here is a polymer composite made with a, a plastic called Peak, P-E-E-K, and it's had graphene put into it, and that makes it incredibly strong. In fact, I can't actually try as hard as I can here. I can't bend that. Um, yeah. Also, uh, we've got, um, this was made at the Geek. So this is the Graphene Engineering Innovation Center. And I don't know if you can see here, but these are pellets of graphene with um, graphene uh, with uh, polyethylene. So these can be put into um, uh, a heat injection molder, and you can make injection molded plastics from uh, the graphene composite. So it's fairly straightforward to do in principle the trick is you've got to get the graphene really well mixed in and when people tried this in the early days they didn't understand that it needed to be mixed in intimately and they ended up making the polymer composite worse than either the graphene or the polymer separately so people lost interest remember we were talking about the hype a while ago this right. is part of it part of the dimension of the hype was people didn't understand how to apply graphene and they thought they were going to get something amazing and got something worse because they weren't applying it properly. They didn't understand the science of the mixing. And this is one of the things places like the Geek are very good at. They have teams of people who are very good at understanding how to get things intimately mixed in a way that enhances and brings out the true performance of the material. So, so now it's thorough, it's like more evenly dispersed throughout so that there's not weakness at weak points, because otherwise you could snap a corner of that off, but you couldn't do that. Yeah. Yeah, and if we go back to your meatloaf, you would get either a mouthful of breadcrumbs or a mouthful of meat when you really want a mixture of both. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, and, and it actually it's a little bit more complicated than uh, you'd think at first sight because not only have you got to get the right amounts mixed in, and I'll come back to that in a minute, but you've also got to make sure that everything is intimately bonded together. The other interesting thing that we've found is over the years, people were adding too much graphene. So they were adding... Really? five, six, 20% graphene. And, and you'd expect that the more you add, the better it got. The problem right. was 
it, there's an optimum. So it increases up to a point, and then the more graphene you add, it gets worse. And people originally were working in this high level here, and what they've realized is counterintuitively, you need to add less, and all of a sudden, you're adding less, and the results are getting better and better. Should we have a look at some of those results? Sorry. Yes. Lady. No, that that sound that that makes sense. You know, you have to have just the right proportions. Yes. Whereas, yeah, but it, it's counterintuitive and doesn't make sense if you've never come across it before. That you have to add less to get to make it better. Well, maybe not in manufacturing, but in cooking, it does because you can't add too much of salt, for instance. Very good point. Yeah, this cooking analogy is looking rather good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> maybe we should have more chefs amongst the scientists working in this area. Let well, me. Show I, that's <laughs> Let me share my screen. We'll have a look at some slides, uh, just to yeah. illustrate uh, some things going along. So uh, one that I definitely know you're familiar with, Debbie, is uh, the Innovate Shoes, because uh, you have a pair of these, don't you? Yes, I do. And um, the wonderful thing about the, the shoes is the graphene is in the soles, and it gives it this amazing ability to flex and not... You would you would expect it, you know, when you're walking, you know, from you know heel to toe, that yeah. type of a. But it also flexes on a side to side, so that when you um, are walking on an area that has like an unexpected, uneven surface, uh, the shoe really flexes so nicely, rather than the shoe falling, and um, and it helps to really have a better footing. I saw a little girl who had little red boots on, and I said, oh, "I like your boots." She said, "I like your red shoes." And I said, my, my shoes grip the ground. She goes, they grip the ground? And I said, yes, they actually do. So she thought that was, you know, pretty spiffy. And, uh, but they do. They really give a grip to um, when you're walking. You definitely notice it on a slick surface if, the, if there's a wet tile or something Your like experience that. of these has been pretty good so far, quite positive. We should say yeah. that you're, you're in the middle of a trial for us, aren't you? Because we're, we're not paid by the company to say any of this, so we're not promoting these shoes. Um, right. I've got a pair, I've bought them uh, just as a normal citizen, so have you, and uh, we're, we're trying them out, and they seem to be pretty good. Athletes uh, around the world are using these, and um, the, the graphene is actually in, is the black bit in the cell here. They've mixed the uh, graphene in with the rubber compound in the cell, and what they've found is that um, normally for the, the really high-performance running shoes um, and sports shoes, that they have to be, they have to have a very soft rubber compound to do exactly what you say, Debbie, which is to grip the ground. And yeah. the problem is, to make the rubber like that historically, it's worn away quicker. So you have to throw these shoes away after about 200 kilometers of running. Um, our colleague Rob, uh, he's had his shoes now for uh, well over a year, and he reckons he's done well over a thousand kilometers in these, and uh, the, the soles are still looking like they're new. So it really does work. Um, it, adding the graphene as a composite into the rubber of the sole makes it stronger, makes it grippier, but also more harder wearing. In fact, the company, um, we're told, um, has found out that the, the shoe, the soles are lasting so long now, they've got to reinforce the uppers with Kevlar and uh, to make them last longer. So, oh, that's interesting. Yeah, it is. There's uh, unexpected things that come out. Um, yeah. And the the the, ad, the amount of graphene they're adding is so small; it doesn't significantly add to the price. The uh, the the shoes now are just slightly more expensive because of this Kevlar that they've had to put into the uppers, not the graphene in the soles. Hmm. Oh, interesting. So, yeah, it's a great application. It's a great application of graphene. Yeah. For those qualities. Yeah, exactly. And uh, they're finding that so you can add graphene to all sorts of materials and you get amazing results. Now, today we're just going to focus on polymer composites, so rubbers and plastics and things like that. Just as a matter of interest, by the way, the, the lady holding the, uh, the bottle of black liquid here, that's what the actual graphene solution looks like. It's a dispersion. Uh, we don't know exactly what's in there because it's very secret, um, yeah. trade secrets and stuff, but that's, they've blended graphene with other things to make it blend with the rubber well. Let's have a look at another example, car okay. tires. So, uh, yes. yeah, you heard about these. The car tires are a really big problem. Um, they get thrown away, and some of the dumps, I think, Debbie, you've seen some of the dumps in Kuwait, you can actually see them from space. They're that big. When yeah, the that's, that's really incredible. We've, we've got them all over the United States. Yeah. So, you know, you yeah. go through any rural area, you're going to come across, you know, a big yeah. heap of tires somewhere. Really difficult things to recycle. The, um, so anything that allows the car tires to last longer, um, 
is a good thing to start off with. And there's a company called Perpetuous. They've been running tests with graphene enhanced tires. So mixing graphene in with the rubber. They've tried it out um, uh, over a period of about a year on UK roads with co uh, high mileage commercial light vehicles. So small vans and trucks, that sort of thing. Um, they've found that they've got um, a 40% increase in the wear resistance. So the tires don't wear out as much. Um, interestingly, they've also found that um, they've got um, better rolling resistance, so they get better fuel economy, and also uh, they're better in uh, snow and ice. So it could be, you know, you don't have to change snow tires over in the winter. You could probably have one set of tires that are equally good in summer as in winter. Um, oh, that's incredible. Yeah. Yeah. And it sounds, it's just like the shoes, you've got that same type of uh, the grip and also the dur durability. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Same yeah. stuff that's going on. And then um, at the end of life, graphene can come in again because um, they've been found now. There's a company that started out um, just late last year, it's active at the moment, where um, they're looking to recycle uh, the tyres into mats. I think you know a little bit about this, maybe. Yes, and, and these, these mats, so the tyres are ground and then... Um, you said, I think that you told me something is it's added back in to hold it back together. They so add they're... natural rubber in to hold the, uh, the, the, t the ground up tires together. But, yeah, if, but you just, if you just put natural rubber in, then uh, the mats will then fall apart or whatever you make it from eventually falls apart and bits break off. So yeah. um, adding graphene into the natural rubber bonds the recycled tires together. Yeah, and, that's, and, and the mats are, are terrific because it's it's... It's like some of the other things that we see on floors and that we that, that will cushion a little bit, something like that that's extremely durable and flexible and made out of recycled tires. I mean, it solves so many problems. Indeed. To, to use into an application like this. It's a, it's a great application for that. Yes. And the guy behind it, uh, you can see in the picture there, that's Dr. Vivek Concheri. Uh, interestingly, that's his uh, lab uh, not far away from the Geek in Manchester in the UK. Wonderful. Well, it's interesting work. I'd keep an eye on the things that we can use graphene for because it's, yeah. it's just much everything. Let's have um, a look at one more uh, result because uh, there's Ford cars as well. And um, uh, you and I know the people behind this, Debbie. And yeah. um, what Ford have found here is that they're, they're adding graphene into the... Um, into the engine compartment. So it's underneath the, the bonnet. I think you call it the hood in the States, don't you? Yeah. yeah. And uh, this, this is into boring components that are things like injection mold, oh, yeah, uh, molded components, which are foam, polyurethane foams that go around things like fuel rails and pumps and stuff like that. Now, originally, Ford were looking in, in the lab uh, at increasing the heat endurance and the strength. Uh, to make these uh, composites last a bit longer. What they found was they, they, um, they hired a, an intern and uh, he was playing around with these graphene composites uh, just in the corner of the lab. And he suddenly thought, oh, I wonder what happens if I put the polyurethane foam onto the vibration testing rig. And he found that there was a 17% reduction in the amount of noise that was transmitted through these things. And that was completely unexpected. Nobody ever realized that that was even going to be a possibility. So he accidentally found that one of the comp bits of competitive advantage in the automotive industry, which is quieter, more refined cars are a competitive advantage. People are prepared to pay more for them. And it turns out that this has unlocked um, a secret competitive advantage for Ford just by adding a bit of graphene to the polyurethane foam. Yeah, and, and it seems like every time we turn around, graphene is surprising us with either different superlatives or different applications, in this case, of the, the amazing things that it can do. And you can, it's, it's really only limited by imagination and how, how graphene could affect basically every industry we touch. Definitely, you know, yes. And, and this yeah. has big effects as well, because um, this was uh, the first cars with graphene in them came from Ford came out in 2019, the beginning of 2019. And so there are at least one million Ford cars on the road now with graphene in them already. That's and it's exciting. increasing over time. Now, that's, that's exciting. And it's good to know because, you know, you wouldn't hear about that necessarily. No, it's, uh, it's something which is, uh, is not actually... Um, 
uh, shouted about a lot by Ford, and um, uh, but it necessarily is uh, something which is uh, working rather well for them. So yeah, if exactly. I yeah if I stop sharing my screen, and we'll come back again. So we found that uh, graphene is added into polymers as a composite material, so it improves the uh, the material more than either a component individually would uh, would be expected to do. It also uh, needs to be added in less quantities than you would expect. So adding less is more, uh, which is another surprise. And then the other surprise is because graphene is a multifunctional material, then look for benefits you wouldn't necessarily expect, like the um, the quietness of the cars with the, um, the Ford uh, polyurethane foams, where it was originally added for strength and heat resistance. So it's pretty amazing stuff. Definitely so. It's intriguing to find out about it, and I appreciate your time sharing it, sharing with us today. And um, we're going to come back and talk to you again. Great.